That's not the way this marks, motherfucker. If you're going to live by the fine print, you die by the fine print. And if you're going to fuck people by the fine print, then you get fucked by the fine print. Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'd like to just issue your, your weekly reminder that insurance is a scam. It doesn't matter what country you're in, it doesn't matter what it's covering, most of the time insurance ends up being a scam. It's not something that's limited to the United States of America. This happens in England, this happens in Australia, this happens all over the world. And I've been over this in many of my older videos. So here is a video where I was discussing my own experience with insurance, where for some reason the, the thumbnail picture is a surprise Pikachu face, where I was going over how I had business interruption insurance. My business was interrupted because my entire zip code had no electricity for a week and it wasn't covered because of flooding and my insurance was not flood insurance. My store did not get any water in it whatsoever and I was able to prove that. In spite of that, they didn't cover it. See, the power plant blew up because of a flood and that's why I didn't have electricity. So I need to have flood insurance as if I'm insuring the power plant instead of myself. That was a ridiculous technicality. There are a couple of others where I was going over coronavirus insurance claims, getting uh, you know them weaseling out of insurance claims for, for coronavirus. Now, there are some people that said, Lewis, you moron, you didn't read the fine print. If only you read the fine print, you would know that uh, that that it's not supposed to cover these things. This is a particular one where I, I, just, I just, came, just straight out came and called him a bootlicker. And the reason I called him a bootlicker is because in many of these cases, it doesn't matter what type of insurance you purchase, they still don't cover you. Some people will say, well, Lewis, business interruption insurance can't cover a pandemic. That's a different type of interruption, right? Well, there's actually someone that was paying for pandemic insurance that was not able to get a payout on their claim when their business was shut down due to a pandemic because they claimed that it doesn't cover COVID-19 because it's, quote, not a name disease, even though governments around the world are specifically citing this disease when shutting down their businesses. That's right. You could pay for pandemic insurance in case a pandemic comes. A pandemic can kill hundreds of thousands of people. The pandemic can then cause the government to shut down your business and have nobody want to go to your business, and they won't cover it because they believe it's not named. Insurance companies tend to make up the rules as they go. And the way that they're able to do that is because they have all the money. So the way that this typically works is you file an insurance claim once you have been financially harmed, whether it's health insurance, where you're, you're, you're filing a claim because you had a heart attack and you're now healing at home and you need help paying the bills, you're going to be in a place where you don't have a lot of money because you can't work because you just had a heart attack and you're also not in the best physical condition because you just had a heart attack, so you're not going to be able to fight. They know that, so they, they know that you're in a vulnerable place where you can be taken advantage of. If you're a business like mine and you have no income as a result of having to pay your employees for a week that you're not able to open your business, you're not going to have the money or the time to hire an attorney. You have a lot of backlog of business that, you're, that you need to get done because customers are going to kill you and they're pissed that it's not done yet, even though they know the entire zip code doesn't have electricity. So you need to spend time at work. You're not able to really make money during that period, so you're not able to pay an attorney to fight for you so they know that they can kind of get you at those times. And this is something that is continuing to happen across America and as well as Australia. So this is a video I did recently on a Bloomberg article where they were going over the fact that insurers win most but not all business loss lawsuits. So in, in, in America, insurers are winning most of these cases in court and are getting out of paying the businesses that have been paying them premiums for years. Now many may look at this and think this is, you know, this, this is just the way Americans do business, but in reality, this is the way insurance does business all over the world. It is fundamentally at its core a scam. The reason it is a scam is because the people who decide whether or not they are going to pay out your claim are the same people that have a financial incentive to not pay out the claim. The insurance company is the company that is going to lose money if they pay out your claim. Yet the insurance company is the company that gets to decide whether they pay out your claim. So they're always going to want to decide that there's some sort of technicality that means they're not going to pay out your claim. Like pretending that coronavirus is not a fucking pandemic when it's killed hundreds of thousands of people across the country and shut down millions of businesses around the world. So here is an excellent article in Australia. So it says Australian businesses fight insurance industry for payouts over coronavirus revenue losses. This guy suffered a near knockout blow when the economic tra uh, crash drained his cafe of customers. He is among at least 250,000 Australian businesses affected by a drawn-out legal battle over the fine print and insurance policies that look set to stretch well into next year. And he says, if the insurance industry just tries to hide behind their terms and conditions, I think they're diabolical. Now, one of the areas of interest in this case is the fact that they are using the technicalities against the insurance companies. So when I scroll down in the article, 
It says, if you can get a price or premium to cover a pandemic, it is likely very expensive. Pandemics are something that ne have never been contemplated uh, to cover the cost because they're simply too large an event. So there are, there are three main points I'd like to discuss within this article. The first is where he says, the industry insists that the policies are not designed to cover pandemics, so paying out claims like Mr. Hops would send a financial shockwave through the sector. Pandemics are something that should have never been contemplated for cover simply because they're too large an event. Uh, and again, I, I really think that that's something that you should think about before you offer an insurance called pandemic insurance. There is also a very interesting uh, straw man argument that came out of one of my videos recently where they said, I love how Lewis thinks only businesses have bills. Insurance companies and landlords get money from heaven. Get a grip, Lewis. Now, one of the things I think you'll notice in this channel is that I don't often rant against people simply because they are rich. I don't have videos going over economic inequality. I don't have videos talking about billionaires and millionaires and hundred millionaires as if they're evil, even though myself, I'm simply a humble thousandaire. I want you to make as much money as you can make. Make as much money as you can. However, all I ask is that if you are providing a service or a product, that you provide what it is that you're advertising. So insurance companies are selling the service of insurance. And if they are not able to provide that service, service at the price that they're selling it to you at. They either need to raise their price so that they can or go out of business. Now, insurance companies don't want to raise the premiums because if they raise the premiums, then people are not going to want to purchase it because they'll realize it's ridiculous. They could just self-insure by just putting the money into an investment account or their own bank account and leaving it for a rainy day. And they don't want to actually pay out the claims because if they paid out the claims, then they would, you know, their business model doesn't work. So what does that mean? That means that you have a business model that's fundamentally unsustainable. The way I responded to this particular comment is I said, standard straw man garbage, insurance companies have bills that they should be able to pay from the years of collecting premiums. If they can't, they should hike their premiums, change how they do business, or go out of business, not fraudulently deny claims and scam their customers. So I offer a laptop repair service. I don't come out to customers after they pay for a repair service and say, you don't understand you have a $4,000 machine. I can't make that thing work for an entire three months of a warranty period. I can't make that work for only $200. That's insane. What are you talking about? We can't do that. We have bills to pay. We have employees. We have rent. The customer would then come to me and say, well, then why don't you simply charge more or tell me that? Instead of charging $200, why don't you charge me $400 for the service and then actually provide it to me rather than advertise it at $200 and then not provide it to me? I don't get to say, well, you don't understand. I have, b yes, I have bills to pay. The way I pay my bills is by setting my rates at a point that is commensurate with my expenses so that I can break even or make a profit so that I can actually provide the services to my customers that I need to. I don't, you know, advertise service at 30 or 50 bucks and then offer services to people that last for one or two days or that don't work at all and then just not give them their money back. That's not the way business works. The way business works is if you want to make money, if you want to have a nice fancy office, if you want to have a nice car, if you want to have a nice house for yourself, then you offer a service at a price that allows you to provide that service. And these insurance companies clearly cannot do that. The moment they're asked to pay out claims is the moment they start making all sorts of claims that, oh, poor old us. Now, when people say, if all of these insurance companies paid out all of these insurance claims, they would go bankrupt, maybe they would. But that doesn't mean that it's the fault of the insured that means it's the fault of the insurer for not anticipating this. So I remember having this one conversation with a kid that came into my store many years ago. There was this 8- and 10-year-old kid that would always come in for about 20 or 30 minutes a day after school was over. And whoever was working in the front of the store, they would look over their shoulder, or try to look in the microscope, and ask a million questions just out of curiosity. And we would entertain it because we thought it was cool that there were people that kids that actually wanted to learn this stuff. And I remember they came in around the time that I was denied my insurance claim. And they, they told me, listen, we can't can't cover every single person in this area or in a business interruption claim or we'd be screwed. And I'm never going to forget this. An eight-year-old kid was able to ask, wait a second, if you offer a business interruption policy, you know, if something's going to interrupt a business, it's probably going to be a big event, something that's going to interrupt multiple businesses, right? And I said, yeah, probably. And he says, so, and, and they didn't think of that before offering this? So an eight-year-old kid was able to understand that. But adults are somehow oblivious to this idea. If there's something that's going to interrupt your business to the point where it can't function anymore, chances are that's something that's such a great event that it's going to affect other surrounding businesses, and maybe that should be worked into the cost of the service. The fact that this has never worked into the cost of the service is not the fault of the customer that is trying to get what they paid for. It is the fault of the scam artist that is offering something 
without being able to provide it. I'm not mad at the insurance company for having a fancy office. I'm not mad at them for having six-figure salaries. I'm not mad at them for having millionaire executives. I'm not mad at them for having publicly traded companies where they are off able to offer dividends to their shareholders. I am not mad at them for having mansions. I am not mad at them for having nice cars. I am not mad at them for making more money in a year than I will make over the course of my entire life. I am mad over the fact that they advertise a service they are fundamentally incapable and unwilling of providing and looking to weasel out of at every single moment. The one cool part about this story that you'll see here is that they're actually able to get the insurance company to pay out based on the technicality. And this is fucking awesome because this is what insurance does. What they do is they have a 90-page contract that no normal person without some sort of doctor degree in law is going to be able to understand. And they point to the little technicality and say, this is why we're not paying you, so fuck off. Here, that's what the clients do to the insurance company. And it is such sweet justice, and I hope they win. Here it says, Mr. Haupt's insurer, Zurich, says he is not covered for COVID-19 because an exclusion clause in the fine print means the policy does not have to have to pay out claims related to pandemics. Yet that's a serious flaw in Zurich's position. His policy states the insurer is not liable for any diseases declared as quarantinable under the Quarantine Act of 1908 and any amendments to it. But that legislation no longer exists. That legislation was replaced with the Biosecurity Act in 2015. So the fine print says that they're not liable for anything listed under an act that no longer exists. So the insurance company never updated their fine print. And the cool part about this article is where it says they made a mistake, said Beryl and Watson lawyer John Beryl, who is representing Mr. Hopped and more than a dozen other business interruption insurance customers. It's ironic because I'm usually fighting insurance companies who are trying to rely on the fine print to knock back claims, but here the boot is on the other foot. The insurance companies are trying to say, forget the fine print. We never meant to cover you, so we're not going to pay you. No, 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 no. You don't get to make hundreds of millions of dollars scamming people based on fine print. And then when the fine print doesn't help you, you just get to say, oh, well, well, forget about the fine print. That's not no, no, the intention. You don't understand. The intention of that fine print was to fuck you. So even if the fine print doesn't legally matter anymore or is not legally valid, we exist to fuck you. So it doesn't matter. That's not the way this works, motherfucker. If you're going to live by the fine print, you die by the fine print. And if you're going to fuck people by the fine print, then you get fucked by the fine print. It says in the article, the ICA says that if insurers end up accepting every claim under these policies, the industry could be facing a $10 billion in payout related to COVID-19. That is double the $5 billion pool of funds the industry currently holds for business interruption cover. Now, whose fault is that? So you didn't budget properly. You fucked around with your customer's money. You offered services at prices that you could never be able to actually pay out. And now somehow, well, well, you don't understand. If we do our job, we'll go under. What about the hundreds of thousands of businesses that are going under because you didn't do your job? See, what they're doing is they're, they're trying to get you to accept the premise of an asshole. What they're doing is they're saying, listen, I know you're saying that you'll go under, but you don't understand. If we provide the service that you paid for, will go under. <laughs> the, 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 the fact that they'll say these things out loud is absolutely, with no shame, is hysterical to me. And I genuinely hope that the Australian government does not allow it to happen. This is another one. It says, in Damien Cody's case, his policy says that Opal retailing businesses, which has been ravaged by the collapse in international tourism, is covered in the event of a pandemic. His policy says the business is covered for any damages related to a serious outbreak within 20 kilometers of its premises. Yet his insurers, AKA and Lloyd's, Lloyd's, does that sound familiar anybody? These are the fuck faces that we're not covering pandemic insurance policies during a pandemic. It's it says over here at Lloyd's, in the rejection letter, AXA argues that his policy does not cover business losses related to an overall economic slowdown as a result of a pandemic, even though his policy says they're covered for a serious outbreak. So the policy says that they will cover damages related to a serious disease outbreak, but then they say they're not going to pay it out because it doesn't cover business losses related to an overall economic slowdown. Like, you're splitting hairs here. And again, anybody who defends this, in my opinion, is just being a bootlicker because this is the most obvious scam that I've ever seen. Anybody who can defend what's being done here, where they say, we will cover a pandemic that fucks with your business within 20 kilometers of your business, but we will not cover business losses related to an economic slowdown from a pandemic, you're splitting hairs to fuck your customers. And 
one of the few good things that I hope will come out of coronavirus and all the horror that it has inflicted upon society is that people across the world and all nations, all governments, all uh, walks of life, all cultures will start to come together and realize insurance for the scam that it is. If you have a company that offers insurance as a service and they are allowed to choose whether or not they are going to pay out the claims when they are the company that will be financially hurt by paying out those claims, you have a conflict of interest that makes it impossible to class this as anything other than a large, broad-based scam. We're going to enforce the fine print to screw hundreds of millions of people out of insurance, but the moment that fine print backfires on us, we're going to say, forget the fine print, don't think about the fine print, think about the spirit of the law rather than the letter of the law. In my opinion, the individuals who run these companies, as well as the cogs who are allowing these companies to continue functioning and continue fucking over everyday and ordinary people, are beyond contempt and beyond redemption. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing is screwing over ordinary everyday people. They know they're fucking over their neighbors and the people that are in their community that allow them to function on a regular basis and they don't care. And it's about time that normal everyday people start to just say, no, I'm, just, I'm not putting up with this. I'm not putting up with this. I'm not doing it. You know, if, you, if there's a lease that you need to sign and it says there is the specific required insurance, just say, like, no, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm not doing it. I won't sign the lease. I won't deal with it. Until people, until normal everyday people start to recognize this on a large scale and start to actually do something about it, we're not going to get change. And I really hope that the COVID pandemic is that turning point in society where people in all cultures, all nations wake up around the world and recognize that insurance is a scam and that this must end. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.